Jesus again, folks. And then in 08, it's Shaman Party Beauty Ball. Post extraordinary music news, comedy drama, recklessness, and love six shot TV. What you watch? You know what you watching. You know who you watch. <laughs> but before we get to the music news, comedy drama, recklessness, and this video reckless to get to. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a box of Mike and I can't. And at the end of this episode, we will discuss this box of Mike and I can't. So you must watch the entire episode to find out why we must discuss this box of Mike and I can't. We want to discuss it's important. It is damned important, and I need you to watch the whole show so that we can discuss why this box of Mike and I can't has affected my life, your life, and the lives of people around the world. Just Trust me, I'm Barty Beautiful, I'm a trustworthy character, I never let you down. Just wait! Nine more minutes and we'll discuss Mike and I. But let's start with some recklessness. And let me tell you something, there is nothing more reckless today than the situation between Lisa Ray and her forthcoming ex-husband, the premier of Tux and Kekos, no other than Michael Michek. I think that's how you pronounce the first name. Things are getting ugly. We discussed this before. When my man the premier is getting it in with Roxy and kind of slid Lisa to the side. Hey, hey, that's fine. I had no problem with that. Good job for you, Roxy. I'll say that again. But one flew to another. Prison Lord 6969 flew to Zoom. Yeah, good job. I rock with you. But the situation is getting more reckless each and every day. I mean, just the other day, Lisa Ray Fool, for some reason, decided to put up the pictures of her bruises that she got when they was fighting at the mansion. Like, put them up and she just look at all this shell and everything. It's, just, it's not a good look. And I want to advise her on what she should do next. But I understand her position. You know, I really didn't understand the position of the premier. I didn't understand really who he is or what role he has in the country or how powerful he is. So me being a dedicated host, dedicated, I said it, <laughs> a dedicated host, of Six Shot TV, I did a little research because I wanted to really help her, but without the proper knowledge, I couldn't do so. Now here's what I found out about the uh, Basically, he is the leader of whatever political party is in power in Turkey. And not only is he the premier, he is also like, let me tell you this, he is also the minister of civil aviation, commerce and development, planning. District Administration, Broadcasting Commission, Tourist Board, Turks and Caicos Investment Agency, and Tourism. As he got all those things up under his umbrella. And he's rich. And he's probably corrupt. Oh, he's all these things. Now, Lisa Ray, I understand that maybe you know more about the West Indian culture than I do. But I still want to give you some advice. So I did even more research. Even more than just find out who he is. I spent this entire weekend watching a massive, massive rerun of the Mighty Quinn. Because I wanted to get a picture of what corruption is like in the Caribbean. So I watched the Mighty Quinn over and over and over. With this, I watched it proper Towns, yes. Over and over and over. And what I learned from watching about 16 hours of the Mighty Quinn is that Lisa, if you do not know Xavier Quinn, aka Denzel Washington's character in the movie, there's no hope for you. Because he's not from the United States. You have no authority. They don't even like you there. That you you you're not doing anyone any good with your actions. Understand, you can't take him to court because he is the court. You can't call the police because he is the police. Like, that's a, that's a lot of things going up against you. He runs that place. He runs it. The only thing you can do, if you want to be vengeful, you know what I'm saying? If you want to be vengeful, you can turn him in to the British people who've been looking into his finances to find out how much corruption has really gone on in the Michigan. Uh, you know, family history. I mean, all his family members are, are politicians. So you don't have a chance in the world. So you can turn him in and get him in trouble. But how would that help you? If he loses money, power, and fame, you can't recoup off that. So now y'all just both of them. So, now that I have looked at massive hours of the Mighty Quinn and realized that that place is quite corrupt <laughs> because the Mighty Quinn told me so, here's what you do. 
Step one, gather up all your dirt and all his dirt. I mean, everything he's ever done to you, be honest, everything you've ever done to him. Get it all together, put it in a three-ring binder. Get all the evidence in a three-ring binder. Meet him on the island somewhere, pass it to him, and say, how much do you want for this to never see the light of day? I want some money, and I want a beach house, and I want it now. Let's do some negotiation. You get your money, because that's the best you're going to ever come up with. You will never be the first that turns here. Those things will stop me saying it out loud. And then after you get your money, okay, maybe Roxy's in for ass whooping. That's fine. Like, I got no problem with that. But what you're doing with showing the bruises and trying to take them to court for alimony, it's not going to work. Because the mighty queen told me that place is corrupt. And unless you got this to watch in there to watch your back, it's not going to work for you. So just really, please. Just give it up. Some of some been free advice. Bombarded you. Free advice. Another person I've been riding for, and now I'm still gonna ride for, but I'm riding for somebody else at the same time, is Rick Ross. I've been behind Rick Ross through this entire CEO situation. I, I'm not with him. I don't really, I don't really care. But I'm also for DJ Vlad suing Rick Ross for $4 million for somebody in Rick Ross' camp knuckling up his eye when they got mad at the question he asked Rick Ross and he was giving an interview to Ozone Award. I got no problem with that. First, let me say this to all people who feel like DJ Vlad is a snitch now. He's not a snitch. You know why he's not a snitch? Because he's not a criminal. Criminals follow criminal laws. People who ain't criminals, we don't follow that. And so, if somebody punches you in the eye and they've got more money than you, that means they owe you some money. That's how it works in the United States of America. If you got more money than me and you punch me in my eye, I want to check. It's like, listen, if we was together and we both got into a fight and I wanted to sue you, that's one thing. Fine, maybe I'm a snitch. If you got more money than me, you punch me in the eye and everybody already knows it, I, I've got to be compensated. Because not only is my mental health at risk, but my, my emotional state is, ugh, oh, I need to check. He takes a real sniff, come up to my house, punch me in the mouth. Y'all will never see Six Shot TV again. Because I will have enough money from whatever blockbuster comes out next to the four. I won't need this damn show no more. I won't need you. I, mean, I, I won't need none of y'all to punch me in the face. So I'm going to get me $20 million. Y'all have to talk to me or watch me again. Keep, keep continuing to watch me because I don't have that money yet, but if it happens, believe me, I'm suing DJ Vlad. I feel you 100%. And of course, like I told you before, why I must discuss the Mike and Ice. Did you know, and this is a box, the flavor of original fruit. You know, an original fruit, Mike and Ice, they're all right. Did you know that a few weeks ago, for a limited time, they had a lemonade flavored box of Mike and Ike's. Did anybody disseminate that information to you? No, they didn't. How come? Do you know what flavors were in the lemonade flavored box of Mike and Ike's? Regular, strawberry, raspberry, lime, maybe even Chinese lemonade flavors. And nobody told us that there was this type of flavor. I have an issue with how we are disseminating important information. We have a media, we have networks, we have televisions, and nobody told me that there was a lemonade flavor box of Mike and Ike's for sale. I was upset, absurdly so, I can't believe it. Then, on Sunday, on HBO at 10.30, guess what came on? House Party. What followed House Party? House Party 2. Did anybody tell you that on primetime cable television, they were going to play both of the important house parties? They didn't even let you know that. How come? Who is disseminating this information? To all the radio stations, to all the TV networks, to all the magazines, and everybody in the media. You are doing everyone a disservice. If you're not going to tell us about such important things as lemonade flavor, Mike and Ice, and HBO2 having a two, no, four hour presentation of House Party 1 and 2. And Tisha Campbell was so sexy in that damn movie. The hell with all of you! 